Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to do another um, variant puzzle type. Um, I thought with the US Puzzle Championship uh, coming up in the not too distant future, I think it's in July this year, we might take a look at an absolute staple puzzle that appears year in, year out in the US uh, PC. Uh, it's it, well, this is a puzzle from 2018's Puzzle Championship. It's called Bag in this one, but actually that's because the US Puzzle Championship in 2018 was themed on golf. This this puzzle type is actually called Cave, or Bagu, I think is the Japanese translation, um, and it was a puzzle created by Nikoli um, way back in the day. And how does it work? Well, it has, as usual, very simple rules um, that lead to some quite interesting logic. So let's take a look at this example on top of the screen there, and you know this is going to be the best way of trying to understand it. So you have to draw a single closed loop along grid lines so that all the numbered squares are inside uh, the bag, as it's called here, or the cave. And additionally, each number equals the count of interior squares that are directly in a horizontal or vertical line with that square's number. So let's look, for example, at the 5 here. You can see the 5 can see this square. Oh, my phone's going. That's going to be Mark. i me just uh, turn that off. Go away. Um, you can see that the 5 sees this square, 1, its own square, 2, this square, 3, 4, 5. So it sees 5 horizontal and vertical squares, including itself. And that rule applies throughout the puzzle. And what we have to do is to somehow build up from just the numbers, that's all we're going to be given, just the numbers, uh, a complete loop of the type mentioned. Now, I'm going to share with you uh, um, something about my own puzzle history. I used to find these puzzles incredibly difficult because I did not appreciate the importance of this part of the instruction, single closed loop. Now, let's just look back at this example and think about it. So, in fact, there's a good good way of viewing this. Let's imagine that this square where the cursor is was, you know, the numbers were such that this could be a white square. So this, these two grey squares here would be inside uh, all of the white squares. The problem with this is that if you stare at the diagram now there would be two closed loops. There would be the loop enclosing the grey squares and the wider loop enclosing the white squares and two closed loops is not valid and that criteria when you're solving cave puzzles is absolutely crucial because it comes up you know about 20 times in a puzzle and if you don't know that that's a rule believe me these puzzles get quite hard um, now what else can we say about puzzles like this how hard are they well in the US puzzle championship this typically is awarded 10 points now if I tell you that the total for the, for the puzzle championship is 300 points and you have 150 minutes you'll immediately realize that you're meant to solve these if you're planning on finishing the whole test you should be getting this puzzle done in five minutes and I would say for an experienced solver they would actually want to make up time on this sort of puzzle because it is a classic variant because you have the opportunity to practice it by looking at past tests um, you know it's something you can get quite good at so I think if you're a world championship level puzzle solver, three or four minutes for this puzzle. Now, as we go through it, that might seem extraordinary to you. I'm not going to race to solve it myself, but it, you know that is how fast some of the best will be doing this. Right, so where would we start? Well, uh, probably the most obvious place is in the top right-hand corner, where we have a two and a three. Now, we know all numbers are inside the loop, so I'm going to highlight squares that are inside the loop in red and I'm going to use X's to indicate squares that cannot be in the loop. Now this 2 now, it sees this square so it can't see any more squares in a horizontal or vertical line with itself otherwise obviously it couldn't just be a 2, it would need to be a higher number. So we get to place X's like this and we know that we're trying to connect all of the numbers into one single loop. So this area here now has to come out. You know, if, if we were to put an X here, we'd, we've isolated this area. Now we know there's only one area we're trying to create, so we get to put in another uh, red square. Um, and what can we do now? Well, one thing 
if we think about this arrangement for, for blank 2, if this square was to be red, we'd have a line of 3 in red in the vertical column, and that would breach this number 2 here. So this cannot see the 4. So we can put an X in like that. Um, now what else can I see that's an easy win? Well, let's use the 3 now. The 3 sees this square and sees this square and sees itself. So we can it can't see any more. So we need to put an X in here. And here's our first opportunity to use the checkerboard. Now if this square was red, let's think about what that would mean. What it would mean is that somehow, some way, because we know this square must connect with these two squares, or these three squares, there will be, it might wander around, but eventually it must come back here, and it would enclose these two squares here. So we'd end up with an interior area, one loop, and we'd end up with an external area, being the area defined by the red squares, in another loop. So we'd have two loops in the puzzle not possible. We have to really look out for that. So actually we can immediately write an X into this square. And don't I don't blame you at all if you've been doing CAVE for a long time and not appreciating how powerful this technique is. It really is cr crucial. So we, we can extend this out because it needs to, needs to somehow connect. This 4 now can't go upwards and it can't go to the right but it needs to see four squares. So the only way it can do that is if it comes across all four of its squares in a horizontal line, which allows us to do this. Now this five, we don't know too much about yet. Um, so probably, obviously it sees one, two. It could see three here. It couldn't go any further because that would connect it to the two square. So it could go one, two, three, can't go this way because that's going to connect it to, to this two square. So hmm, two, three, perhaps this square I think has to be red. Can you see why? Let's actually put an X in and see if we can prove it. So one, two, three, four, and then we'd be stuck. So this square does have to be red as well, but we I don't think we know any more than that. Let's think about this arrangement, these diagonal, diagonally connected uh, numbers. This again is an interesting thing to note because could we have that arrangement? Ignore the fact this is a number three. We can never have this checkerboard pattern. So we know that one of these squares at least must be filled. Now that is particularly powerful where you have a 2 on the diagonal. So let's look here. We have a 2 on the diagonal here and a 2 on the diagonal here. So what we've just said is that this arrangement would be illegal because it would cause the checkerboard. So we know, um, let me just fix this, that one of these two positions must be filled. And therefore we know, because it's a 2, neither of these two positions can be filled. Now that's quite nice, because by checkerboard logic, we actually get to put that X in as well. So that is, again, that's a nice tip for how to make quick progress um, with these cave puzzles. So let's do the same thing down here. We know these two can't both be X's, therefore one of these must be true. Therefore, this square cannot be true. Um, now, this square obviously can't be true because that would join it, join these three cells in red, and the two would see three cells at least, which isn't allowed. So let's put an X into that square. And probably now I'd start to think about this three and the four down here. So we obviously know they're both inside the loop that. And we know if we think about it, that although this could go one further up here, it can't go two further up, because that would meet, that would breach the three condition. So this four will have to come one this way, at least. And look at this, this is classic uh, cave logic. The fact that this had to come one this way brings it close to this number. 
and we know this number will be in the loop. So now, can this square be red? Well, no, it can't, because then this four square would see one, two, three, four, five cells. Not possible. So that is an X, and that, in fact, fixes the four square. It must be like this. It needs to see four squares. The three square can now see three squares, so it cannot go horizontally. And now, if you look carefully, you'll see that this L shape here is enclosed. There's a checkerboard arrangement there which allows us to place an X and it must come out. So we need to we need to extend it. Now can this square be red, bearing in mind that the three is going to be inside the loop? No, because then it's going to make this three at least four see at least four squares. So again we get to just extend our internal area slightly and see where we can go from here. Mm. Probably the next thing I'd look at is this 7. So the 7 can obviously come upwards. It could see this 3, and that would that would mean 1, 2, 3, but it could go no further if it did that. So we know this 7 is going to have to come at least 4 squares this way. So let's put those in and see if that tells us anything new. Well, there's a couple of things I'm noticing here. It joins it to the 2. Now, the 2 cannot see any more squares because it's already seeing this square. You can see there's now two checkerboard patterns there. This one and this one. We have to eliminate that possibility. Now, this 7, if it goes as far horizontally as it can, we'll see six squares. So it's going to have to go one square vertically in order to get to 7, but the moment it goes one square vertically, it sees the 3, and that in fact brings it to the total. So we've now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that is perfect. Let's put an X in here, an X in here, two more checkerboards. Close them off. Extend this one upwards, and now this sort of uh, rotated F shape needs to escape, it needs to join its friends so we need to extend that up one the moment we do that this square becomes impossible because we know that the two and the three are in the loop if the two, if this square is red the two sees three squares not possible now we get to eliminate the checkerboard, fix the two this must extend upwards this two it can only go in this way by checkerboard logic, this must be like that. This 3 is going to be fixed once we fill in this square. But you can see we still haven't managed to get this red square connected with the rest of the puzzle, so we do need to move that one further up. So we've now got, we need to move this one further, this 2 as well, that needs to connect to its friends. And here we have checkerboard again, look at the 7. If we put an X here, we have a problem. We must avoid that. And again, this is lovely. Because now, this 7 sees 6 squares vertically. So if it extended this way, it wouldn't just see this square, it would see this square as well. Two more squares, that breaks it. So we must put an X in there, and we must extend this one further. So this 7 is now complete. Put an X in here can't be a checkerboard, so this must be red. And if you look here, this 2 is in the grid, in, inside, so again, more checkerboard logic. This can't be an X. Uh, so we need to highlight that in red. The 2 now sees everything it needs to, so we need to put in more cells. This must be an X by checkerboard logic. I hope you're getting the idea now about how important this checkerboard logic is. Um, you can imagine me in my erstwhile days of solving. This must be, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago when I used to sit in Canary Wharf and do these puzzles in my lunch break. Um, and I used to sit on the bench and wonder how on earth these puzzles were even solvable in any meaningful amount of time because I didn't appreciate this single loop point. Um, yes, I am a moron, but won't be the first time that you've thought that if you're a regular viewer of the channel. Um, now, let's think about this 6. So this 6 sees 1, 2, 3, 4 maximum squares vertically. 
So we know it's going to have to come one over. It's going to have to go that way at least once. Well, it has to go at least twice, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. This two is now finished, which limits the six in the vertical direction. Um, twos, by checkerboard logic, we can eliminate this square. Now, there's a. if we look at this area on the right-hand side of the grid now, it is completely isolated unless it comes out through here. So these two squares must both be red in order to allow this area to escape, as must this square, which we could have proved with the 6 anyway. But now the 6 sees 6 squares, so that must be an x. We know this is in, so if you're getting used to this, you'll spot there's a checkerboard arrangement. Fill that in, fill that in. The 3 sees all the cells it needs to, so we need to put an x in. The 7 sees 1, 2, 3, 4. And luckily, there's just enough room in the vertical plane for us to fill in three more cells like that. You know, this is in, you know, this is in. Um, now, the logic I explained earlier regarding these threes was that one of these two must be in. I mean, you can see immediately that that actually allows us to enter the X here because whichever one of these is filled is going to consume another one of uh, this one's total. So we can place an X here immediately. In fact, because this is a three, it could never connect this way in any case. So we have to, we have to put the X there. This three now can only see cells vertically. And there you go, there's an interesting bit of logic there. To finish off the puzzle, we're left with this square. And here, let's see what happens. If we make the square red, look at that. This x is now in its own loop. That would be one loop for this x, and then one loop surrounding all of the red area. Two loops not allowed by the rules of the puzzle. So the final step to solve this puzzle is to correctly identify the checkerboard here and fill this square with an X. And, um, well, almost the final step. <laughs> this five I've just noticed is not right either, so I'm sure many of you were shrieking with laughter at my almost fail there. But that's how to do a cave puzzle. I hope this was interesting. I um, hope it's good practice for those of you who might consider doing the US Puzzle Championship this year. If you'd like to see more of this type of puzzle, um, do let let me know. i um, very happy to do more of these um, as and when we get the time. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the Chuck content. Please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments whether you like the videos. We really appreciate any feedback. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.